What is up, everybody? Welcome to the 20 Podcast. I am your host, DJ Spider. DJ Spider! That is right. As always, our show is brought to you by BeatSource, the music streaming service for DJs that play everything. Uh, we have got everything you could ever want. We got curated playlists by amazing curators. We've got songs no other uh, record pool has. We've got intro, edits, we've got acapella, outs, you know, transitions, so much amazing stuff. And it's all available through BeatSource Link, which you can do streaming. You can get all this mu uh, music, you know, from the cloud. And if you're scared of the cloud, we've got an offline locker where you can save up to a thousand tracks offline so you can have it ready to go. It's pretty incredible. Head over to BeatSource.com and start your free 30-day trial and uh, use the code the 20 you want a 60 day free trial all right hop on there thank you guys for listening thank you beat sorcerers and uh please rate and review the podcast on all the platforms we are available everywhere you want to watch us on youtube you want to listen on apple spotify whatever we are out there and we thank you for supporting and listening um you guys today we got a special one we got a big one guys we got an epic one today's show we have got a world famous dj and producer on the show, okay, that has created a sound that is very much his own, a really unique sound. He has a new album coming out that has just been released, um, or it was coming out, and now it's out as you're listening to this, and he's kicking off this massive concert tour um, that is absolutely insane. It's called, well, I'm, you, you have to listen to hear what it's called, but um, his new single uh, has a feature from IDK, uh, he's previously collaborated with many amazing people like Flostradamus, Dylan Francis, Gunna, ASAP Ferg, Wiz Khalifa, Tory Lanez, so much more. He's got support from everyone in the business like Skrillex, Diplo, pretty much any DJ and producer you know uh, from the EDM world to the open format world. Uh, we're all supporting him because he makes dope music and he is a nice, cool dude. Um... What else? We get to peek inside of his brain. We get some really good insight into his thought process. He really gives us some gems, some things that you can take home with you and apply to your own life and be inspired by. Um, a lot of lessons are, are told on this podcast. So I love talking to him. I hope you guys love listening to the conversation. Please welcome to the show, Nightmare. We are here. It's the 20 Podcast. And we have got on the show today, Nightmare. Give it up. We got, oh my God, <laughs> listen to that. Oh, wow. cheering. Beautiful. Thank you. It must sound like Red Rocks or something. <laughs> yes. <too. laughs> uh, yo, well, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for taking the time. I know you're busy. Uh, how you feeling today? I feel actually great. Yeah, Good. I got back from Europe last week and nice. kind of just, I don't know, I've had some time to chill. I only had one show this weekend, which is fresher that's like crazy that's for good. you right yeah it was yeah, i mean it to only have to go to vegas and back friday oh my god it's like a quick in and yeah. out yeah I know, it's I've nice. seen on your social media, like, it looked like you traveled the entire globe <laughs> since, like, <laughs> April or something, like, I did just have this a six ridiculous months. Amount. Yeah, I went to South America for a bit, and um, was in Mexico for a bit, and Europe, yeah. two separate times, mm -hmm. went over and then came back for, oh my god, back again. And so crazy. Yeah, so it's good to be back. Yeah, any, like, standout, amazing moments from any of those trips? Oh man, for shows so many or, good <laughs> things. Sure. Um, but I, my family is from Hungary. Actually, my dad was born in Budapest. Oh, interesting. And so there's this festival there called Siget, and it's like one of the biggest festivals in all of Europe. That's like you know Dua Lipa and Justin Bieber were headliners and stuff. Yeah, like that. wow. So I've always wanted to play it, and I was scheduled to play it in 2020. You know, we booked it in 2019, of and course. everything was pushed back until <laughs> yeah. now. So. It was super cool to be able to go do that. I had some cousins like from Budapest, you know, come out to the show. That's so and, cool. Um, yeah, it was it was it was cool playing. I love playing in Europe. It's always a little different. I can like rip a little drum and bass and a couple of those sounds that don't work quite as well over here. So it was super fun doing that. And um, South America was amazing as always. It's just that's dope. Love going outside the U.S. for sure. Nice. Yeah, I love how you you know just from the outside looking in, you seem to enjoy these places like more than just going in and out like you went skydiving in switzerland yes. i saw and you were camping in Kauai, and yeah. like you know really enjoying it and bringing your mom and like making yeah. the most of it yeah i uh i mean i i love traveling in general and yeah. i'm a huge foodie also and so 
Um, and yeah, I think the hiking outdoors camping kind of thing has become sort of like the t- only time that I get silence and quiet and like a right. little bit of a meditation type vibe. You don't just so. listen to nightmare beats like 24 <laughs> hours day, a day. Just, just ripping dubstep <laughs> while I'm falling asleep. Melting your <laughs> entire face off. Uh, so yeah, no, I mean, I, I even here, you know, it's like if I, if I have a day off, I go out to Malibu and hike yeah. around and just try and spend some time outside and. Um, so yeah, when I went to Hawaii, I've always wanted to go to Kauai is kind of, you know, I feel like I have these cool bucket list, bucket yeah. list destinations. And so if I'm within a, like an hour flight, yeah. I'm just like, oh, had I you ever been before? No, I had never, I've been to Hawaii, but I'd never been to Kauai. Yeah, Kauai is like, I, I Insane. was going every year for like a long time. Oh. I'd bring my family and we would go for like seven days, then was, 11 days then 14 days. I'm like, we need to move here. It was the so best good. place ever. It was, it was, it kind of blew my mind, honestly, yeah. with how, how good it was and how chill it was. And everyone That's was so really cool. nice. And yeah, I had some local friends who you know, it took us, we took the boat out around the Apali coast and camped on the beach that like is only accessible by boat. And right. So it was like extremely, you know, disconnected yeah. from everything. And it was so cool. That's the best. Oh my God. Yeah. So cool. And I saw, um, on, you know, within all these shows, you just did a show at the legendary Red Rocks yep. and uh, made sort of a recap video mixed with a promo video um, for your new upcoming tour and album, Dreamverse. Yep. And um, that was sort of like a, a time, uh, an opportunity for people to see a preview of what the actual concert tour is going to be like, right? Yeah, totally. Um, I think, you know, that one too, we just had kind of had that Red Rocks date open up yeah. earlier in January or something this year. Right. I think it was even February. Um, and my agent called me and was like, you know, I know this tour is not ready, but like we have this date and it's like, right. if we get a Red Rocks date, like we should kind of do it because it's just such a legendary venue. Oh, and yeah. Like, you know, um, so I was like, all right, let's just put together as much of the show as we possibly can finish as much of the album as we possibly can and kind of, you know, debut a cool stage design or, you know, you know, put together as much as we can essentially yeah, yeah. of the Dreamverse show. So of it was still a portion of what it's going to be, but the what I have planned for the fall tour and for all the fall dates is definitely a much more robust. And yeah. it's a cooler show and a lot more. Um, this is kind of the first time I'm like time coding anything. Oh, I've never, wow. you know, I've always DJed and I've had maybe a little bit of time coded lyric videos or something like that mm-hmm. um, that my VJ is launching, but. Um, yeah, this is one of the first times where we're like really going through each song and being like, we want a laser moment here and we want this light moment here and let's program this like this. And right. we have videos that we're syncing to all these different parts and cool little intermission breaks and trying to make it more of a show rather than yeah. just like DJ set, you know? Right, right. More of an That's so cool. And so how does that work? Like you time code out each song. Do, do you have like a pre done set you work with the vj and the lighting team and your whole team just to put together an all like kind of immersive show like an all yeah pretty much i mean i i um yeah i have sort of a creative director partner who i've been working with on on just writing the story of the album and sort of the backstory and all these different characters and kind of things and then um i'm working with this really talented dude named shin um and he's kind of um another just really talented creative 3d modeling visual director type he can create visuals and um he you know he's worked with porter a bunch on his shows and world or not worlds um what was the last porter album that he just did um i don't know the name sorry anyway (laughs) um did that show was amazing i went and saw it once and um yeah yeah so we've been kind of putting together um a little more of like planning out the the really important moments of the show and kind of these like chapter like it's bro- broken up into eight or nine different sections. Yeah. So we have sort of like these moments where things are time coded and everything in between. And then I have like the spaces in between where I'll kind of like DJ it a bit more and might be switching up the songs a bit more. And the VJs will be freestyling a little more in the LDs. Right. But there is at least like eight or nine really big moments in the set where everything stops and there's kind of a cool video like sort of moment that happens and right it's more of a concert experience right yeah totally and um and so your album comes out it's of the same name right Dreamverse on September 9th September 9th yeah and um I know that you know it's all coming in conjunction and then for this tour you picked venues that were like your favorite venues and venues that you thought could 
really pull off this experience, right? That the, yeah. the thing that you envisioned. Yeah, I think you know this one too. I sat with my agent, and you know he actually mapped out probably twenty or thirty dates or something like that, and um, you know, I just the show in order to to in order to keep like the presentation of this dream versus show yeah. as amazing as I wanted it to be. Right. I was like, most of these places, I just can't have, like afford to do it. It would just, for me to do the show, to bring eight different crew members, you know, a sound right. guy, a VJ, a laser guy, you know, fire marshal for the flames. And like, you just got to bring in a whole lot of crew, custom stage, like lasers, all those different things. You know, it's, it's it, very expensive. Right. <laughs> basically. So sure. the only places that and I you're was paying like, for everything. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if it's a hard ticket show, it's like, if you sell that many tickets, you know, right. And whatever. But yeah, it is basically, I don't think a lot of DJs, especially people that listen to this show, like realize, realize that, yeah, you know, 100%. what's going into it. They think, Oh, that would be dope to be up there in that stage. Oh, there's fire yeah. going off. But like, you're oh. planning all of this oh, and paying for it and working with everyone on it. And yeah. And for these big shows too, like, you know, Bill Graham, for instance, it's like, it's an 8,000 capacity room right maybe like the fee is like 50 60 70 80 thousand dollars but like yeah you need to spend almost that much just to if you want to make the show like truly incredible and like you know right. the visuals that amazing and have the led wall that's extra giant and the lasers and the yeah. extra flames and all those things and it's like you could go in there with no led wall and just a lighting package and you know play a show and make a bunch of money right or, but really it's more of a in the long term yeah, thing, and creating. also as an artist and someone that wants to just do something dope. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think you know you put in That's that. What these moments are for? Yeah. Yes. Exactly. So I'm like, I want to do them as big as possible and in environments when like it's worth it because yeah. there's that many people there and I can spend all this money and it's like I actually you know get yeah to, get to do the show that I, the way that I want it. Right. To be, you know. That's so cool. It's cool to hear sort of the the like hybrid. DJ show slash concert and the way that you're able to put it together with like those anchor points that are like, okay, this is happening. Yeah. And then you can switch it up city to city or however you feel yeah, and the totally. VJ can at those parts. But um, yeah, I think we have a general vibe picked out. I mean, it's similar to how I run a lot of my sets. You know, I kind of start off really high energy and yeah. heavier kind of dubstep trap stuff in the beginning. And then it slows down a little halfway through. And, you know, depending on how long the set is, I guess. Right. But, um, so, yeah, we have sort of these different, like, vibes almost, like, mapped out. And then I'll switch it up a little in between. But. Right. And that's kind of like the album. Yeah, exactly. Is the different vibes. You yeah. know, I, I actually listened to the whole thing. Nice. And, yeah. um, I mean, it was it's insane. You know, it's, and it's, like, my thought about it was, like, it had many different styles and many different vibes, but a cohesive sound. Yeah, I mean that was the goal. You know, I was trying <laughs> because to, even some songs don't even have the full drop or whatever you would call. You yeah, know, like exactly. and the single even uh, it's really dope. And but I feel like that doesn't have like a big drop on it, right? Totally. Yeah, I mean I think um, with the trials, the, the I, I mean? yeah, yeah, trial. The sorry, the, the latest single. Yeah, totally. IDK is. I mean, he killed it on that. Oh, super dope. Um, yeah. And yeah, I've done that with a few kind of um, hip with a lot of the hip hop collaborations I do. I just like to. Um, have like just the hip hop version that right. comes out first, and it's still hype, but it's not like I think a lot of hip hop people and fans of IDK and like I did a collab with Gunna and Tory Lanez and you know ASAP yeah. Ferg and all these types of people, and I think sometimes if you throw that huge bang and drop in there, it just alienates a little. There's people who just don't want to listen to it because of right. that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you can always make the VIP version. Exactly, or, and so because I know I've I have that. Two versions yeah, the I'm ASAP like, Ferg track you did. Like yeah. I have the one that I could play, and then there's the crazy VIP one. Yeah, if you exactly. Drop. And the VIP one is the one that I play in my right. shows. You know I'm what sure. I mean? But first, like you know, I want people to be able to enjoy just the hip hop song and play that on radios without like you know, yeah, being like a crazy <laughs> banger that's right. like, terrifying for people um so yeah for this one too i've been working with space laces on doing the vip for that one. Oh, nice um, and he's like just the coolest most talented influential dude ever he's right one of my favorite producers in the game so i um, super stoked for that that will be coming out after the album is out but. nice yeah i mean like you were saying your music lends itself i feel like to all different kinds of djs and people and even the radio it's not just like oh that's that trap dubstep kind of stuff we don't yeah. mess with that you know like i feel like your stuff can a lot of djs in the open format world and i don't know beat source and stuff like that can um play your music in maybe not 
a festival environment, you yeah, know, and totally. it goes off in Vegas and all the big cities in the right way, and especially if you mix it in the right way. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, I've I've just always loved making all different types of music as well, so I feel yeah. like I really made a point, even with my first ever Nightmare EP before Street and all that stuff, um, you know, I, I was like one kind of house song and one kind of melodic banger and one yeah. heavier banger and tried to just diversify all the sounds so that I wasn't going to get like pigeonholed too much and right being like, yeah. Cause I feel like I definitely see a lot of people in the industry too, who, you know, I mean, there's good sides and bad sides to both. It's like you can right. brand yourself really well, which is really important in having that sound. So everybody knows and it's very recognizable. Like yeah. people like sudden death has done that extremely well. He's like, he knows right. exactly what his sound is brand and everything. But then it's like, I don't know, sometimes you run into, like, if you want to release something else that's not this exact, you know, style that you're, you've are you always done, like, you, the true fans will appreciate whatever it is you're making because right. they just want you to enjoy yourself as an artist. But yeah. there's plenty of internet haters who are just like, yeah, I like the old this. Or of like, course. I wish it was more dubstep or, you know, yeah. whatever. So yeah. I always try to, for me, at least personally, like, you know, I – subscribe to the the notion that you can never please everybody very very much so i always just no. try to focus on what i like and 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 put that out and yeah hope well you can hear it in the album i love that you have a drum and bass track on there yeah, yeah. i love that too i've yeah. always wanted to do that too that's another thing where i've been like you know sometimes i try to use the collaborations as like my chance to kind of like be a little bit more outside of the box yeah because it just you know lends itself to that but um yeah i've always wanted to do a drum and bass song and just especially like kind of a happy uplifting drum and bass song and uh, yeah it's not like the new style where it's just like a drum beat and yeah, then just, like an elephant sound yeah, or something <laughs> <for> like two <laughs> bars yeah no it's, it's definitely more melodic and i always try to keep melodic elements to my stuff and uh, right yeah i just you know that song's at the last song of the album it's kind of this like return home like we did it happy uplifting like, right yeah up, we made like, it fast yeah. you having fun and then it goes into that epic outro the yeah. intro and outro are like <laughs> crazy yeah those ones are cool too i had super fun writing um writing all this stuff and yeah just being in the studio again during covid where i was like i'm not like urgently in the studio to finish right. something i'm just like yeah what should i write today maybe i'll write I'm yeah thinking, just back know. to the thing of making music for fun yeah and exactly. just like versus yeah having it be like a job or like trying yeah. to finish something on time or like yeah just having deadlines and stuff do you have like some sort of universal through line or musical thing that connects all of your music, like to make it cohesive? Like you said, keeping that melodic element maybe, or I think, I mean, it is that I always try to, um, I think it's usually like a very melodic type of thing. Yeah. I just, um, you're able to somehow do melodic mixed with the most epic, <laughs> like heavy stuff too. Yeah. Heavy. And also like, just the, sus you're, you know how to build that suspense yeah. in with these like almost cinematic sounds. Yeah. Like, I uh, think that's part of it too. Um, cinematic and yeah, I mean, I think having a good build up, like you said, and building the right amount yeah. of like energy can be as important as having a cool drop or whatever, right. you know, it's like, um, Especially with the live shows, you know, it's like right. you get a really crazy build up. People are just like, <laughs> just gets everyone attention as much as a crazy drop would. So. Yeah, and then um, people end up making bootlegs and changing the drops and stuff anyway. Yeah. All the DJs, so yeah. I know. Yeah, if I get a really great build up, I usually milk it for a while. Yeah, you can use it so many different ways. You yeah. know, I'm bringing back ones from like ten years ago now Same, that I'm yeah. like, oh, oh, those were good. You know, dude, 100. percent It was like. Um, what was it? There's one, some GTA song from like 2014 that I just put back in my set. I yeah. Like, it just rips so hard. Yeah. I just DJed this party <laughs> called feels so close that yeah. just started here. It was at Avalon last Friday Nice. and it's golden era EDM, yeah. <laughs> which I think is, you know, Who you knows? can interpret it however you yeah. want, but it was like 10 years ago stuff, yeah. you know, eight years ago, 12 years ago kind yeah. of sound and like Avicii and Calvin Harris and the beginnings of yeah. all that. And to go back through all that stuff. And it was like going through my Vegas sets from 10 years ago. I'm yeah. like, Oh, I forgot about I this. Forgot oh, this good was good. This and you can kind of pick out the cream of the crop stuff. You know, you're yeah. like, Oh, the bingo players, you know, yeah. and then I was playing all this other 80% kind of filler crap, yeah. you know, within it, get rid <laughs> of that and just find the good ones. Yeah. yeah. And then now, kind of bring them back because a lot of the people coming to shows were probably like 10 years old yeah. you know that's the thing 100%. they've never even heard that music loud and the yeah. bass like through their whole body so 
I feel like that stuff for me too, like in Vegas, I still play every time. Like there's yeah. random, like still works, random tremor like, and all yeah, that. exactly. Like the OG tremor, like OG, yeah. like show tech tunes. Oh, show tech like, still. Yeah. You know, I did. I, it, they're still the craziest songs in my set, which is like amazing. Sometimes I'm like, <laughs> like I'm like, can't wait. I'm so hyped to play this new crazy. Oh banger. my God. Yeah. And I'm like, can't like, you be into both? Such an average yeah. response. And then like, <laughs> Tremor comes on for the nine billionth time, and everyone's like, yeah. It's like the first time they've ever heard yeah, it. It's like, no, 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 no. I know. You know when they're singing the synth line? Yeah, It's exactly. like a big song. It's like The Calling or some of those. Yeah, 100 Where they sing the, it, just the synth line with no words. You're yeah. like, okay. <laughs> it's like struck a chord. Yeah. Um, so uh, you talked about, like, collaborating with people. How important is that uh, within you know, making music and DJing. I know that seems like it's been a big part of your career since the beginning, yeah. even with slander and totally. people you've collaborated on with podcasts and record labels and in every different way. Yeah. I mean it. Yeah. It's, it's most of what I do is collaboration, right. honestly, songs wise. And I mean, yeah, labels, everything. Um, but I think it's been really important for me. You know, I think even with like how I came up into making a name for myself, like, you know, I was releasing music for as nightmare, I guess, for a couple of years. Just like you know, I'd been making music for long before that, but yeah, um, you know, was just kind of putting out remixes and songs, and waiting for something to pop off. And then when Street hit, and like you know, Skrillex was playing it, and all these big DJs started playing it, um, and you know, I started being able to like get into the you know the DMs or the messages or emails of all these people that I like wanted to work with for so long. Um, that was kind of. Being able to, like, send songs and collaborate with bigger artists, I feel like, is really what sent me into, like, you know, from bedroom DJ to, like, touring all the time. Because right. as soon as Street came out, I put out, like, the Dum Dum remix for Keys and Crates, which was really big. Oh, my God. I, I play did. that still all the time. <laughs> really? yeah. Like, almost every set. Yeah, I have, yeah. like, different mixes I do with it that yeah. it works with. It depends what the crowd is, but yeah. so but it was just, at the time it was like yeah it was it was really big for me, and then I did the the a collab with Flosher Domus who was killing it at the time. I yeah, did the collab with Dylan Francis who was killing it at the time. Yeah, and I think just getting like you know reaching out to those guys and being like here's some ideas or like you know halfway done or mostly done or just like you know yeah I'll do as much work as we you know I need to get this song out together and right. you know driving over their houses or whatever and just plugging away and yeah. um, getting those collaborations done and then getting, you know, putting them out, having my names next to their name, you know, their fans checking, you know, just like sharing all of the, Yeah, of course. The and fans. you guys are all like-minded and kind of, I don't know, cut from the same cloth in the sense that I feel like all of the people you named love music, do it for the right reasons, but also understand the business side of things, yeah, totally. but still approach it from the love of music, yeah. you know, side. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I've definitely met... But like each end of the spectrum yeah. of people just who are pure just artists that don't care at all, <laughs> yeah. and then the oh we're doing it's all it's business. Like business, and you're yeah. like, w do you even like music? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen both sides, but um, yeah, I mean, I love collaborating. I every time I do it, especially if I'm working with someone who's in Ableton or something like that, it's like I walk away with three new plugins I want to download and a right. bunch of new little tips that I like didn't know and some little yeah. effect rack that they like gave me and. It's always something that I get out of it that's useful for like me as like an engineer, you know. Right. What I mean? So yeah, I do love it for that purpose. And so, as a producer, um, you've kind of become a DJ as a way to pr to present your music, yeah. right? Yeah, you weren't yeah. like a DJ before you were producing. No, not really. I mean, I I did like three parties in college or something like right. total out of like all my years and so, right. Um, but it was more about learning was, the equipment to go do that show in Vegas DJ. or do those things yeah. like so who got you into DJing or showed you that side of things um it was pretty much Derek from Slander um, okay because when we first both got to Icon Collective which is the music production school yeah um, I wanted to ask you about that for sure yeah so we you know e even the first day we like immediately could tell that we had really similar song interests and music interests stuff like that we yeah it off became really good friends that's cool and then you know I I was sort of the most advanced person in the class. We probably only had about 20 people. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, yeah, I was the only one who had kind of, you know, I had been teaching myself. And I never really had formal music production, you know, training or anything. But right. I had spent the last six years, like, learning it. You know yeah. what I mean? And so I had a pretty good idea. I was kind of ahead of most people. And so, yeah, I kind of ended up 
helping Derek with a bunch of production stuff and kind of, you know, just working with him whenever he was working on projects and helping right. him with stuff. And then he helped me, you know, when I had my first DJ sets, like, okay, let's pick all the songs you want. I'll help you organize them so it right. makes sense. And, like, we'll figure out the flow of the set. And, like, here's, you know, the best way to set up your cue points and all those things like yeah. that. So I definitely owe him a lot for helping me, like, really get my feet and making sure that when I was, like, doing my first shows and it was just not a complete train wreck. Cause right. I feel like it would happen if I, if I didn't have them. There. Yeah. It's dangerous. I mean, are, were you st on USB sticks and, um, record box like from the beginning? Um, yeah, I think I first, I got like a tractor S two or something when okay. I was first learning in college, yeah. just so I could learn a little bit of mixing and stuff right. like that. And, um, yeah, I was like making electro house and DJing like, you know, yeah. What was banging at the time. Right. Some called complex tro. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Wolfgang um, Gardner or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Like Lazy Rich songs, just ripping it. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, I think uh, I, I got the S2 just to, like, kind of learn. And then eventually once I got here, I was like, all right, industry standard is, like, using CDJs. So I just right. I had to, you know, I learned. I think I had my agent book a couple of random, like, nights when there was, like, an event at Sound Nightclub. And he right. just book like 6 to 7 p.m. before doors he, they would let me go in and like practice on the CDJ oh, wow. so I could like learn did that at like three or four times and and then yeah I mean my first shows you know were all not very large shows so I had a few shows that I could maybe not have the best <laughs> best DJ performance and right. slowly get used to it as as time went on yeah and now you DJ, um, I mean, I know you do so many different types of shows and some are more concert based and some are festivals, but I, you've had your Vegas residency for, yeah. I feel like a long time now, right? Yeah. It's been, um, at I least like five or seven years, years. Or six years. Yeah, yeah. I did 20, I think 2016, I did like kind of a residency with Encore and Win, and I right. did like eight shows or something for the year. It wasn't a ton. And then I had switched over, um, to the Hakusan group. Which yeah, Hoxon Omnia. Now Hoxon is owned by Tau. Tau group. So now, they own now it's a million things too. Most yeah, of the city. Yeah, like they got Chicago clubs and New York clubs and um, Vegas clubs. And, right. Um, but yeah, it's it's honestly great. Everyone at Tau that I work with is so nice and like the hospitality people are great. The best. Yeah, I agree. Really, really awesome. Good people over there. That's so cool. And so, from like a DJ perspective, like what have you learned from DJing in Vegas? You know, cause I know it's different yeah. than doing those shows. It is super different. I mean, it, you know, um, it's, you know, the hard ticket versus soft ticket thing. It's like hard ticket show. It's just a venue where people are coming to your show because it's your show. They brought right. a nightmare ticket. And yeah. then like Vegas, it's like, you know, 75% of the people every time is like the people <laughs> on Chinese New Year have a table next to the guys who are there for the concrete convention next to yeah. a bachelorette party. And then it's like, I love the concrete the convention guys. <laughs> I've been there literally <laughs> in Vegas. And they're like, yeah, the concrete conventions in town this weekend. It was like, we're like, going to need you to shout out uh, Bob's concrete. Dads. He's the biggest <laughs> spender of the night. So, uh, <laughs> literally um, <laughs> he's got yeah, the instant concrete market on lock. Like all the dad rock anthems came out that night. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was dropping sweet child of mine edits and like random things like nice. that. But, but yeah, it's made me a way better DJ just because, um, you know, the one thing that ties everyone together, obviously, is everyone's there to rage and party. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, no matter Even who you Bob's are. Bob's Concrete, Chinese New Year, <laughs> yeah. or Everybody's the Vegas local, or sure. the Nightmare fan. Yeah, exactly. There's it's totally, that Venn diagram. They're all always meeting. the fans up front, too, who are, like, super Nightmare fans. They know every song. And they're right. just, like, ripping it. And then, yeah. But you got to be able to kind of please everybody in that situation. So Yeah. Well, yeah. it seems like you've it's gotten the hang of it and and do a good job if they keep bringing you back. Cause I've seen a lot of kind of big DJs come and go in yeah. Vegas and haven't kept the long running residency like that. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, it's a definitely a specific style of set. Like, you know, it's different than any of my festival sets or anything right. like that. I'm playing a lot more. I play for two hours and you know, which I usually, which is longer do, than yeah. usual. Right. And so I'm playing a lot of like, you know, more house tunes than I would usually more hip hop yeah. tunes, more like, you know, a couple like, any guilty pleasure pop song that is something that people would know if I can find a cool remix of it from someone who's like, you know, of course, just a cool remix, then I'll, I'll, I'll throw that in there. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Just it, it's a party. It's like more of a house party. You kind of got to like go in there and I play my first three or four songs that are usually pretty hot and heavy and I can tell pretty quickly whether it's like 
people are going to be way into that. You know, maybe it's a college spring break weekend. And right, right. And everyone's going hard. I can play crazy bangers the whole yeah, time. Yeah, it's EDC or, weekend or, or something. Yeah. yeah, sometimes people just, you know, I don't know. It's harder to get their attention or house works better or, like, throwbacks work better or something. So, yeah. Um, I think it's been nice having that because, it, yeah, it's, it's made me much better at DJing. And I feel like some people are a little too, like, I don't know what it is, but just don't want to, like, oh, I'm not going to play that type of music or don't want to do the open format thing because they think it's, Whatever. When they go to Vegas, like yeah, like certain artists, yeah. just if they can't play exactly what they want, like all the time, then they just don't want to do it, which is right. cool too. It's like a totally another thing, but um, yeah. yeah, I've kind of really kind of fallen in love with like the you know the actual DJing part of it and right being a little bit more of an open format, but still like having bangers and like kind of yeah. heavier stuff and like something maybe that people aren't expecting. Right? How do you like prepare your for your set there? Um, at this point, I just have a big, massive running playlist. And so I have right. probably three, 400 songs, um, on my USBs and a record box playlist. And, <clears throat> you know, the first 30 of them are like pretty, like generally planned out first 30 minutes or so. Like I have these five or six that I know work every single time. And then, yeah. um, you know, everything's organized by key and BPM essentially, you right. know, and I just have a big playlist. So the first big section, which, you know, I probably have 75 tunes is like 150 BPM kind yeah. of, um, you know, dubstepy trap type stuff mixed with hip hop, things like that. And then I have another huge section that's, you know, another hundred songs of just different house music stuff, 128 right. BPM, halftime, 130 stuff. And, um, and then I have a little section that's like my, you know, 174 87 or whatever you know the drum and bass kind of section yeah and it's got some hip-hop tunes in there too like my song feeling good which is one of my bigger ones is in there right and, um so yeah i just kind of organize it into sections and occasionally you know i usually start with the heavy stuff and then play some house music and then you know for the last 45 i'll just be like okay I'll go back to the house music they like that or go back to the bangers they like that or right. i'll play you know switch it up to some like 90s uh, throwback like hip hop tunes or something yeah. for a little bit and just play some old Lil John records or whatever you know um, more house party stuff depending on the vibe but um, yeah yeah do you drink or anything record. like honestly when you DJ or it's ever kind of the only time that I do drink at shows. in Vegas it's when in they're Vegas. just like here you go <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> massive bottle of like class A Azul or some really yeah, nice you're like, tequila let's just do this and like every like. You know, yeah, everyone, that's, like I said, that's I the know. thing that is the one common thing <laughs> of everyone there is everyone's getting hammered and partying. Right. So I end up, like, never drinking when I'm at home or, like, I mean, I'll have a glass I of know. wine or something, Same. but I'm just around it so much that I don't even, like, want alcohol ever. <laughs> but I then when like I get to Vegas, I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a couple of nice, tasty cocktails for the show. Yeah. And then that loosens you up to play the guilty pleasure song at yeah. two thirty in the morning, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and sing along with everyone yes. with pure joy exactly. running through you. Um, oh, that's dope! And so you mentioned um, Icon Collective, which mm -hmm. is you know this legendary uh, music production school in LA that a lot of successful people have come out of, and um, so even the the teachers are incredible. I know you worked with B sides a yeah. lot, who I worked Brother. with too. Like he helped me produce different songs, and he was kind of my teacher for a while, yeah. like privately. And I remember he would. This was a long time ago too, and he would talk about you. Yeah, I remember him talking about you too, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's so funny. He would play me your stuff. I'm like, this person's <laughs> the insane, like so talented. Like funny. your stuff was just mind blowing, you know. Yeah. And and <laughs> he would try to show me like how you were doing it, but it was like far beyond you know he's yeah. like you take the ping pong delay and you're yeah. putting it on the i mean thing. honestly a bunch of stuff he showed me like you know what i mean he was a great mentor and same yeah. thing yeah he's he amazing would, you know he does a million sessions with a bunch of producers too all day right. and he'd be like oh look at this one thing i just discovered and you know yeah every cool like plug-in pack like every cool like sample pack that i got was always doing right b-sides was just like i would go if i ever needed a re-up on just like cool stuff or like refresher of like yeah i need some fresh like patches or like sound right. design tips or something b-sides the legend shout out to b-sides <laughs> b-sides the legend he's baby now he's got two kids i just went over there to his place really not too long ago yeah crazy Hang with the little ones amazing i remember when yeah he was just about to get married yep. <laughs> so that's so cool to see that and uh, he's like compose he does so much now right he's yeah. composing for tv, TV stuff, yeah and still mentoring people and producing and 
Yeah, he's super talented, and he just loves it. You know, he loves it so yeah. much that, like, like you said, he's so deep into it. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's dope. And so, like, going to that school, um, what what things did you take away from that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Either, you know, technical things or just big, more macro stuff that you yeah. just, like, psychological. So kind of a little bit of all of that stuff, honestly, because um, I think, like, you know, a lot of the curriculum of, like, Ableton and Logic and learning those things maybe wasn't, like, so groundbreaking or mind-blowing. But Right, and you knew some of the stuff. Already. Yeah, but, like, yeah, exactly. It was a lot of, like, for me, it was a lot of, like, polishing and mixing and mastering type things and just, like, understanding a little bit more about, yeah, just EQing things better and, like, right. understanding just actually grasping it. I feel like, you know, before that whole time I was like, oh, yeah, compressor, like, I kind of <laughs> get that. Right. But, like... I don't think I understand the actual mechanics of like what it was doing. And so yeah. understanding those types of things and just getting to the point where my music was like, okay sounding to where I could play it next to like a Skrillex song and it, you know, yeah. the loudness is similar and the drums sound the same and yeah. like getting good at referencing songs and things like that. And I feel like technically it was super helpful to have all that and, and just being in a class with a bunch of people who also are doing the same thing. And so you're always like just a lot of resources for, finding new plugins or finding new sounds or finding just anything you needed. It's like, you know, yeah. who's someone who's good at tracking drums and there's someone in the class who knows how to do it really well. Right. You can just ask and you get the right answer. And it's like having that is, was really invaluable. And then, right. Um, you know, and then we had a couple other classes like the art of flow, which was like a whole class just about kind of like the creative process as a whole. Right. And you know what you do when you have writer's block and like what to do, like, you know, just thinking processes of like actively not comparing yourself to other artists because that's something that I think everyone gets caught up with. And yeah. Even if you're not an artist, you know, you're a business or you're creative or you're right. a painter or writer or whatever. It's really easy to always look at it, somebody else and what they're doing and be like, man, why am I not doing that good? Or why isn't my shit yeah. popping off as much as them? Or like, you know, why didn't my thing get as much attention? I feel like it's better. And it's like, just yeah there's always something you know you never know that person's story how long they've been doing yeah it. like it's you, you can never really compare yourself to someone because everything is different everybody has their own journey and their own experience and so right. i think that was something really valuable that i learned yeah is, um, very valuable just trying not to get caught up in that because it's really easy to do and you know as i've grown too like you know even now i'm at the point where i'm like oh well if only i did this one song i would have been <laughs> even bigger now and right. i'm already you know at the point where at that time i would have been like holy shit i can't believe i'm you know a yeah. headliner for a festival or something exactly like that. so it never goes away you're always like <laughs> trying to just compare yourself and so i think that was one thing that really helped me and the whole concept of this album too was um you know kind of this hero story and like the whole joseph campbell like um um like the monomyth. I don't know if you're familiar with like one of the books we read, Power of Now. Um, and I think it's Power of Now, right? Is that Joseph Campbell? I'm like neck of confusing my books now, but um, Joseph Campbell was this dude and he studied, you know, spent his whole life studying all these religions, comparative yeah. religions, figure out what was the thing that tied all of them together. Because everybody, right. you know, all different parts of the world, they kind of all have religion, but there must be something. And it ended up being this like hero tale, hero, hero story. And it's kind of this this story that's super relatable to everything if you really like kind of look at it in a broad spectrum and it's you know every lord of the rings movie and pixar movie and like all right. these things kind of follow the same like there's a hero and he's in his natural environment and he's kind of like uncomfortable or like has this lofty goal that he can't you know scared to do yeah and then he has this moment where he crosses the threshold and like goes out into the unknown and it like it's kind of like in this uncomfortable world and experiencing all these things that you know he's never experienced and you have this series of trials and tribulations and battling. You have a mentor who you meet along the way to help you get through. And then at the end, you, like, face your big fear and conquer it. And then you return home a better person. And so it's like this loop. Yeah. And then once you get, you know, and it's it's. And so I really identified with it, too, because I was like, oh, man, you know, I moved out from North Carolina to here. and didn't really know anybody. I'm, like, kind of fighting to do this music thing. And, you know, 
attempting to achieve this like bliss or this end goal or whatever. Right. Um, and so that's kind of how I wrote the music for the album too. I like wrote, you know, the first song is the intro. The first song is like the song after the intro is called threshold. And then there's kind of a love story. And then there's like the trials part and the temptations. Oh. And then there's like the fear and love, the big decision at the end are those two songs. And yeah. the, another dose is like kind of the return home of like, I would do it all again. Like, Kind of thing. So, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it's, it kind of it kinda puts it in perspective for me after because I read through the song titles yeah. and I didn't totally understand all that. Yeah, so it's kind of that's, that's super where it's like from is like this hero story, and so I kind of wrote the music on, in this hero story format, and then um, got with like my creative buddy who's like way into cool sci-fi things and you know movies and films all this kind of stuff and try to you know put characters in place and settings in place and yeah so everything kind of exists in the dream verse and like there's a sci-fi story that goes along with it but it is also this kind of like linear hero story of like everything that's going on oh that's incredible it's crazy. so cool all wow came together through icon yeah that's amazing <laughs> much. yeah oh that's so cool well i know you got to get out of here soon oh you're good awesome. yeah how much time you have? still got a little bit Oh, yeah, yeah. What's the... Look up Joseph Campbell. I think it's called... Uh, Power of Now is another one that we yeah, read in... Uh, right. At, at Icon. But I was just trying to think of... Uh, Joseph Campbell. Why can't I think of it? It's, it the, the whole Joseph Campbell book is basically just a uh, an interview that he did. The Hero's Journey. Here, oh, yeah. It's just called The Hero's Journey. The Hero's Journey. Okay, oh, okay cool. Oh, The Power of Myth. That's the other one that... I was thinking of it's too many powers going so there's on. There's a lot of a lot of <laughs> things going on, but yeah, it's just the hero's journey. Is, Got is it. The Joseph Campbell. One. Okay. Power of Now we also read there. Um, well, more books for people to read and get inspired Power of now by. Is really good, also. Even yeah. just the audio book. Sometimes I'll throw it on and re-listen. Derek was another one who was like, "You gotta listen to this," and I was like, "It's it's just really helpful, especially with a little bit of that like nice comparing yourself to other people and just getting that ego right." Like oh, that's one of the hardest brain. things of our whole industry, you know, yeah. is just staying original, not comparing yourself to other people, yeah. doing your own thing, staying the course of what your vision is yeah. and not letting it get distorted by everything else around you. Yeah, it's not easy. But yeah, Hero's Journey. Okay. And if you, even if you just Google Hero's Journey, there's you'll see, you know, click images and you'll see all the different steps of the journey. And like, oh, yeah. That's kind of where I took, like, inspiration for each song. That's so cool. Yeah. cool. Amazing. Well, yeah. um... Yeah, I know you got to get out of here. Um, is there any uh, other things, you know, that we want to touch on? Are you doing anything outside of music or? Oh, man, uh, there's just too many busy. things. I feel like during COVID days, I was like, man, I got all this time. What do I do? And so I like, right. started like f doing some like house flips with my brother, like construction projects. And oh, wow. Um, there's nice. like TV project. Like I started a TV show years ago, three, four years ago with my brother and my part, one of my visual partners, James Winteralter. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we're like that. We, we spent years making this idea for the show and pitching it and we finally sold it and it's just finished filming it. And so in a couple wow. months, I get to announce like I'm executive producing a TV show. And so like, cool! It's a million things that I've been doing, but um, that's yeah, I'm incredible for this to all be coming together. Yeah, oh, I'm so happy for you, man. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. And yo, just a personal, selfish kind of question. I heard you on another podcast talking <laughs> about that you. It was a long time ago. I think it was like Willie Joy's podcast, yeah. but that you played club soccer your whole yes, life. definitely. And wow. I have never been a uh, good athlete my whole <laughs> life, but my son somehow is this incredible athlete nice. and is in club soccer. We just spent the summer in Europe for him to oh, compete wow. in. He's nine, but That's we were in like, Spain and he's going playing. to Europe at nine. It was nuts. You're we were playing fun. against kids that are signed to like Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid and he's playing against French Jeez. teams and and he, they so won cool. the whole tournament it, oh it was God. crazy um That's but yeah anything I should like <laughs> know about that oh God. <laughs> I wish I had any good advice to give you oh my god I played so much in middle school and like high school I played middle school and high school team and then it was on a travel team. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, like it's like I'm like learning all week. of this. I'm like, I don't even, you know, I'm so different from all the parents. Like every parent is like a lawyer, you know, and I'm like, I'm a DJ. Like they're like, wait, you go to Vegas and DJ? I'm like, yeah, I haven't slept yet. And I'm at the game with you guys. 
They're like, we won't, That's you know, so yeah, it's like, I'm definitely the odd person out nice. of the uh, yeah. <laughs> world. Well, that's awesome. I mean, if he's doing yeah. good at that age, I would stick It's with crazy, it you know, I feel ass. like who knows what he'll end up doing, but hearing you talk about that, I'm like, I need, I need some I insight. It. I mean, it at least kept me in good shape. That's for damn sure. Right. So, yeah. I mean, oh, he's already makes fun of my body and everything. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you got a stomach. I'm like, yo, I'm not that bad. <laughs> like, trust me, you know, he's like, you need a six pack. I'm like, yo. I'm old. Damn, Come on, I'm a DJ. Drinking in Vegas. Nine years old, you need a six pack. <laughs> right? I'm like, yo, I'm trying to just get a one pack old. here. I don't <laughs> think it's going to happen. I think I passed the point, guys. That's um, yeah. All right, cool. Well, do you have any uh, last words for uh, maybe some people out oh, there that want to be in your position or that are aspiring to do some of the stuff you're doing or just any anything Man, for anyone out there? I feel like my advice at this point is always like kind of similar to what we've been talking about. But, yeah. Um, there was actually like a really really good video that I um, I posted a couple times and it's uh, it's from a, another radio show Ira Glass I think it was I don't remember exactly what but um, just talking about basically all creative people and it's like basically explaining that you know the reason that you chose to do something creative is because you know that your taste is good enough to where like if you succeed in it then um you know and you can and you can express that your your taste essentially then it will you know people will react to it and you yeah know, you think it's going to do well obviously that's why you're getting into things and there's this like period of time when you start doing it from when t you actually see success that you're just like hustling and doing it and um and creating stuff that's like not good enough yet because your taste is good enough to know that it's not quite where it needs to be right and so it's really tough and frustrating and everybody goes through that period of time and it could be one year or five years or 10 years but like if you're in that period of time it's just like you that's when most people give up you know yeah and it's really you have to like kind of appreciate that you're in that period of time and not give up <laughs> and then you know push through those moments where you're like you know just feeling like what you're making is maybe not as good as it you know, should be, or you want it to be. And that it just, it takes years of practice and actually just doing it a bunch of times before yeah. you really like, okay, this sounds how I want it to sound. And like, even now it's still today. I'm like, uh, I'm like, it's not, you know, it could always be better in right. a way. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. Just think that's huge. That's so valuable. And, and I think that's kind of an interesting concept and funny in a way, because you have good enough taste to realize that your stuff is not good enough. Yeah. But yeah. you also have to get past that thing of thinking your stuff's not good enough and never putting it out. Yeah, so you exactly. have to sort of like get rid of the Just feeling of work through worrying about what people are going to think, yeah. but also keep pushing and try to stay in the present and enjoy the journey and yeah. enjoy what you're going through. Yeah. Cause you're always going to look back and go, Oh, that wasn't like, if you look yeah. back at your old stuff, you're probably thinking, Oh, uh, I can do so much better exactly, now. Yeah. And you're in the year 2022 right now yeah. in August. And you're going to, in three years, look back too yeah, and go, Oh, oh album, now I'm going to do this. Done this for the album. Yeah. So that is interesting. Yeah. And you that just gotta, does, it's the people that don't have the self-awareness and the, good enough taste that just think they're doing great things yeah and you're no, like yeah exactly. maybe you need it show yeah you gotta <laughs> you need to look in the mirror not the, yeah. or listen to your friends <laughs> yeah, exactly. not just your mom telling you that she likes it yeah <laughs> but yeah i think just yeah working through a volume of shit is the best way to just get to that point as fast yeah. as possible you know it's like the more projects you do the more songs you write and the more nights you spend in the studio the faster you're gonna get to like right where you want to be you know that's that's so cool. Oh my god, that's amazing. Okay, one other yeah. thing before we go yeah. and then let you out of here. But the um I, I was telling you earlier I do stuff with Travis Barker mm -hmm. and I got to go on tour with Blink one eighty two and I heard you say like you played drums growing up yeah. and he's someone you looked up to. Have you ever met him or worked with him or anything? I've never met him. I would love to meet him or work with him. Oh um, my god, you guys would make I would, some insane I mean, thing together. Incredible. I could not I could not possibly tell you how many times i played adam's song on drums like oh my god too like when i first got my drum set i spent like probably literally thousands of times just like playing that intro and that's yeah, amazing oh you guys got to do some kind of dude something plug, plug. i was telling you like when right even <laughs> when street came out i was playing it for him and he was playing you know we would yeah. practice and he'd be doing it so i mean i'm i think you guys are made love, for would love to <laughs> i would love to do we'll figure out some sort of i don't know any yeah something 
I mean, he seems to be working 24 oh, hours a day. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. He's doing so many albums and things <laughs> yeah. and shows. And like yeah. I was telling you earlier, I'm doing this uh, fashion show thing with him in a couple of weeks. Oh, and I'm yeah, trying to yeah. put together a three minute set, <laughs> 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 which might be Guinness Book of World Records shortest uh, DJ set. So but we're flying to New York for me to DJ well, for shit, three if minutes. If you guys got projects, you need some engineering production oh I my can god come in and that would be I'm amazing down. that'd be amazing yeah one day we got to make that happen i'm ready yeah well thank you so much for coming on the show yeah, thanks, thanks for taking the time i know you're running around and uh, you're probably heading Good. off to some other country or something but Just doing pr today <laughs> big got pr nice classy photo shoot after this oh okay okay so that's going to be good, I'm sure. Get your modeling look on. Yeah. I All right. Well, the nice one, so. thank you for coming. Good to catch up with you and thank see you, you again. Bro. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. All right. Peace. All right. That was a fun podcast to do. Thank you, Nightmare, for coming on the show. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I know I did. Really cool getting to uh, get to know him better. And uh, so excited to see uh, people's reaction to the, his tour and his album and everything he's going to do. I feel like he's constantly leveling up um so thank you for coming on the show thank you guys for listening the beat sorcerers we are available on every pod uh, every platform you want to watch us on youtube you want to listen on spotify apple all anywhere you get your your podcast you can tune in so thank you guys for listening join us next week for more interviews as we discuss music that matters to djs i'm dj spider signing off peace